Okay, so what I thought we'd look at is how to go about presenting Office 365 to clients. So this is basically a general framework to give you some sort of guidance as to what works best out there in the field. So the best way to approach this, I think, is that we look generally at um, dividing our presentation up into a number of different sections. Now, typically what I'd suggest is that you want to divide this up into about six sections in total. Okay, so if you divide our presentation up here into around six different um, areas. Now, what we normally would suggest is that each of these areas, you probably need to allow um, around five minutes per section. So if we allow five minutes per section, obviously that multiplied by six gives us a rough estimate of 30 minutes in total for our um, presentation. So it gives you a bit of a baseline from there. Now, obviously, if you want to go longer with that or if you want to uh, scale that up perhaps to an hour, it makes it easy simply to double that up. Now, in the first section that you present, my recommendation would be is to present uh, the Delve service uh, from Office 365. Now, the reason that we will be presenting that is that's typically a service that is not seen in other competing services. It's also something very new, has a major impact on the client, uh, and is a great differentiation point um, that can be taken to their business and allow them to see the benefits of collaborating in Office 365. Now, probably the biggest advantage that Delve will give a customer is that it provides a single pane of glass across all their information sources, making it easy to search and locate information. Now, after you've presented Delve, my advice would be is to go in and present uh, on OneDrive um, for Business, okay? The reason for this is that OneDrive for Business is very much uh, an individual product where individuals can store their files and their information quickly and easily. And it's one of the big concerns a lot of customers have with cloud services is, okay, where do I actually put my stuff? Where can I put my stuff? Now, I think an important part of demonstrating OneDrive for Business is around the mobility. So it's important to highlight that there are mobile apps for OneDrive for Business, there are mobile apps for Delve, and there are mobile apps for just about every other service in Office 365. So make sure that you do highlight the fact that mobility is supported and is able to uh, be installed for individual apps on all of the platforms. Now, after OneDrive for Business, it's very important to cover off the security and compliance questions. Okay, so typically uh, what you're going to see uh, in out there in the field is you're going to get a lot of questions about how secure my data is, uh, where is it stored, how is it stored. Uh, so important uh, things like data loss prevention, encryption at rest, um, TLS end-to-end -end is going to give you the ability, the tools to go and give confidence to the customer that the Office 365 platform is secure and will be compliant with whatever their needs are. So again, a great place to start there is the uh, Office 365 Trust Portal, right? So that's at trust.office365.com. Now, once you've covered off the security and compliance uh, part of the presentation, I'd suggest delving into uh, SharePoint. Now, the reason that you would talk about SharePoint is that most clients are familiar with storing their uh, data, their files in a shared location on a file server in the network share. This will be the location in Office 365 typically for that sort of uh, structure. So typically the uh, file server will have its data moved or migrated to the SharePoint environment. Now it's important to highlight the differences between SharePoint and a traditional file system. SharePoint will give you the ability to do check-in, check-out, version control, also allow you to add things like calendars, contacts, uh, and all that sort of additional information around the data rather than just being pure files and folders. 
The fifth item here I would suggest is um, Skype for Business. Okay, so what we see out there is a large majority of clients are yet to use a messaging tool. Some may be using consumer Skype, some may be using some other tool. The big advantage um, that Skype for Business does provide is the uh, ability to be integrated with the other products. So again, when you start using SharePoint, you can see who's online with their Skype for Business. You can start with the chat, you can escalate that into a screen sharing session and then go to voice. So Skype for Business is a very, very powerful tool that is part of most Office 365 suites and provides another level of communication that many users haven't seen. Now the other advantage with Skype for Business is it's very easy to implement, has minimal impact on clients' existing infrastructure. So it's a very easy way to get a quick win inside a business and also a great way to do demonstrations. Now the final product I would finish off with when doing uh, Office 365 presentations is around Power BI. So Power BI allows you to take and analyze data from uh, spreadsheets, from uh, third party content packs, so things like SQL servers, Google Analytics, um, search engine data, and it's going to give you um, that ability. Now businesses big and small typically need to do lots of data analysis. Power BI allows you to take that data and present it in very uh, comprehensive dashboards. Now the important thing to look at here is that the reason that we start with something like Delve and the reason we finish with Power BI is that they have um, a major presentation impact. So again, Dell being very different, very visual, all about cards, all about uh, presenting data to the client based on their usage, having an intelligent algorithm underneath um, can have a great impact. So that's a great way to start a presentation and make sure that you've got their attention, you have uh, the impact. To finish off with in the same vein is Power BI with its visual dashboards, its ability to query data in ad hoc manners is uh, another way to finish off with uh, a major uh, impact, big bang, to finish off and make sure that uh, you're getting the most impact for the Office 365 product. Now the other recommendation I would probably have is that there are other things that you can present when it comes to Office 365. So maybe you want to present something around Yammer or maybe mobile device management or potentially something like OneNote. Now I would suggest that this topic here, number five, which is currently Skype for Business, could be replaced if you want wanted with um, something like uh, Yammer. Okay, so if you wanted to do a Yammer presentation or perhaps something around OneNote and um, Office Lens, you would uh, substitute that in here. Now, obviously you can substitute that with any other um, number that you wish, but I think that's where it would work best and typically you would aim that at the customer depending on their specific needs. So if they're very much into collaboration, uh, then you look at using a Yammer in slot number five rather than perhaps Skype for business. So again, that gives you uh, a basic idea of where you can slot things in and out, but you can certainly rearrange this any way that you work. But generally my experience has been that uh, this order, so Dell, OneDrive for Business, Security and Compliance, SharePoint, Skype for Business and Power BI do have uh, the best impact and the best bang for your buck uh, when doing that. Now the other important thing to remember is after all of this presentation has completed, uh, there is actually uh, what, I would, what I would suggest here uh, as a, a, a number seven thing that you probably need to have a look at. Okay, so there are two things here I would put in here that number seven is a call to action. Okay, so there are two call to actions here. The first one is uh, what do you want the client, the person you are presenting to, what do you want them to do? And then the second thing is what are you going to do? Okay, so there's a follow up that you need to perform. Is there additional work? Do you need to send them perhaps more information, links, uh, connect up? Uh, create a tenant for them so they can start demoing and playing with it. So again, make sure that if you do all the hard work, do all the presentation that you've done on Office 365, that you do include a call to action and make it easy for the client and also for yourself to know exactly what to do next.
So in summary, uh, the way I would suggest that you go about presenting Office 365 to uh, clients and prospects is that you break it up into a number of components. So the framework I've got here gives you six slots, uh, generally allow five minutes per slot to do a quick presentation on each. The topics that I would mention are in order, Delve, OneDrive for Business, Security and Compliance, SharePoint, Skype for Business and Power BI and also don't forget at the end of that you also want to make sure that there is a call to action for both yourself and the client. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an outline, given you some ideas, given you some uh, better structure in which way you can go and present Office 365. So with that I thank you very much for watching the video.